St. Eanswida, also known as St. Eanswith, was the abbess and foundress of Folkestone Priory, one of the first Christian monastic communities for women in Britain. The Roman Catholic Church celebrates her feast day on September 12. Eanswife was a princess of the Kingdom of Kent. Her father was Eadbald, who ruled as King of Kent from 616 to 640. Eanswithy's grandfather, St. Ethelbert of Kent, had been the first king of Anglo-Saxon England to accept Christian baptism. From her childhood, Eanes wife showed little interest in worldly pursuits, for she desired to dedicate herself to God. Her father wanted her to marry, but she insisted on not having any suitors. The young princess told her father that she had chosen an immortal relationship who would give her unceasing love and joy and to whom she had dedicated herself. Eanes wife asked her father to build her a cell where she could pray. The king gave in to his daughter's request and decided to build her a monastery in Folkestone in Kent. A story is told that while the monastery was under construction, a pagan prince came to Kent seeking to marry Eanes wife. King Eadbald, whose younger sister St. Ethelberga married the pagan king Edwin two or three years before resulted in Edwin's conversion. He had hoped that something similar would happen if Eanes wife married the Northumbrian prince. Eanes wife, however, insisted that she would not exchange heavenly blessings for the things of this world, nor would she accept the fleeting joys of this life in place of eternal bliss. Around the year 630, the building of the monastery was completed. This was the first women's monastery to be founded in England. Eanes wife lived there with her companions in the monastic life, and they may have been guided by some of the Roman monks who had come to England with St. Augustine in 597. Though Eanes wife was considered the foundress of the abbey, she did not become its first abbess for she was only 16 years old at that time. It is believed that a few already ordained nuns from Europe headed and taught the monastic way of life. Following the monastic rule, Eanes wife prayed to God day and night. And when she's not in church, she spends her waking hours reading spiritual books and in manual labor, caring for the sick and aged nuns of their own community, as well as for the poor and infirm from outside. Then there was the daily routine of cooking and cleaning, even copying and binding manuscripts. It is not known when she was appointed abbess of the monastery. According to tradition, Eanes wife died peacefully as she fell asleep on the last day of August 640 when she was only in her mid-twenties. The monastery at Folkestone did not last very long after the Eanswithy's death as it was sacked by the Danes in 867. Eanswithy's relics were moved to the nearby church of Saints Peter and Paul, farther away from the sea. In 927, King Ethelstan granted the land where the monastery had stood to the monks of Christchurch, Canterbury. In 1138, a new monastery dedicated to St. Mary and St. Eanswife was built farther inland. The relics of Eanswife were transferred once again, this time from the Church of Saints Peter and Paul to the new Priory Church. During the Middle Ages, this second transfer of her relics was celebrated on September 12th, which is the present feast day of the Church of St. Mary and St. Eanswife. On June 17, 1885, workmen in the church discovered a niche in the walls which had been plastered up. Removing the plaster, they found a reliquary. Judging by the ornamentation on the reliquary, it dates from the 12th century. A number of bones were found inside, which experts said were those of a young woman. Today, the niche is lined with alabaster and is covered by a brass door and a grill. Eanes with these possible remains were the subject of research published in 2020. In liturgical art, Eanes wife is depicted as a nun, crowned and holding a church, sometimes portrayed with a fish, along with her abbess's staff, crown, and a book. For more information about every saints and their feast day, please like and subscribe to our channel, House of Prayers for Everyone.